The best in the West in association with Access Credit Union. Access Credit Union is your trusted local financial partner. Access your money 24-7 from anywhere in the world with an Access Credit Union current account and enjoy all the benefits while keeping your money local. We support local communities. We support you. Close your eyes and pull like a dog. <laughs> And a new Irish record for Phil Healy, 22.99. Christy Cooney hands over the Sam McGuire Cup to Graham Canty, Cork All-Ireland Champions for the seventh time ever. Hello and welcome to the Star Sport Podcast. My name is Jack McCarran of the Southern Star and I'm joined as always by Star Sport editor Kieran McCarthy. On today's podcast we're going to be previewing the quarterfinal ties for Best in the West, our search for West Cork's greatest ever sports person. To help us do that we're joined on the line by sports journalist Joe McCarthy, whose work you can read in various outlets including the Southern Star, the Irish Examiner and the Echo. Jer is also the LGFA's Local Journalist of the Year and is keen to point out that he had no hand in selecting the final shortlist for Best in the West. Best in the West is brought to you in association with Access Credit Union. Access Credit Union is your trusted local financial partner. Access your money 24-7 from anywhere in the world with an Access Credit Union current account and enjoy all the benefits while keeping your money local. Now, lads, we're going to break these quarterfinal t- ties down one by one in a second. Before we do, though, I want to ask Jur a few questions. Firstly, Jur, we had you on before the round of 16 and we discussed all the contenders. Now that we're heading toward the quarterfinal stage, are there any who've been knocked out that you were surprised by? I was uh, initially. I think the first one out of the out of the traps was um, Bill Daly defeating Declan Barron was a surprise to me. Um, uh, again, it's subjective, but I think Declan is somebody uh, in GA circles definitely who has always been well regarded. But it just shows you the high regard that Bill Daly has held in um, in the bowling community, and I think that's a fair point to make as well. The other one probably that I was a bit surprised at because I was monitoring it and it looked like Conor Horan was going to go through. But uh, Keith Cronin coming uh, very late and over 1,200 votes as well, which is a very, very good reaction, just shows you the motorsport fraternity in West Cork, which has always been strong with rallying. I think it might have tipped the balance there, and I, I didn't expect that. After that, uh, Kevin Jero Sullivan was somebody I'd spoken about in the previous podcast, but it just shows you David Hart's appeal, I think, across the board. Um, there's not a lot of people that probably don't know much about hockey, but they know the Hart's. Um, and they're well regarded and I think the fact that he made he made it through so convincingly but at the end of all of it by the end of it there wasn't too many other surprises but I think Phil Healy's percent uh, about 64-65% against somebody as highly regarded and somebody as well known as Noel Healy should sound as a warning I think for the remainder of it I, I had earmarked potentially Graham Canty or, or possibly uh, Kevin Jaro Sullivan but I think and obviously Paul O'Donovan we spoke about, I think Phil Healy is probably somebody to watch out for in the, in the upcoming rounds. Just one thing you touched on there at the beginning, which is of course road bowling's Bill Daly, and we're going to talk about his quarterfinal flash in a second. But before we do, I just wanted to get your thoughts on something me and Kieran spoke about on a recent edition of this podcast. It was the reaction to the fact that we'd included Bill Daly in our search for best in the West, which is of course our search for West Cork's greatest ever sports person. So our point was road bowling may not be a sport that's popular nationally or internationally but in West Cork it is traditionally very strong so what 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 would your own reaction to be someone criticising our inclusion of a road bowler um, not surprised uh, because of the fact that uh, we live in a predominantly GA area I'm not suggesting it was a GA criticism um, and field sports uh, like soccer like GA um, and like rugby have always predominantly dominated the headlines I think bowling from what I, I mean I grew up with bowling it's just like second nature I grew up with bowling around me but I didn't take any notice of it I suppose that's being honest um, it's only in the last couple of years where I've had the opportunity thanks to Karen and the Southern Star to interview some of the people that are modern day road bowlers and younger road bowlers that I, I that there's a phenomenal following and a phenomenal interest in it and Armagh and West Cork for some reason 
uh, are two like you know they they couldn't be further apart in terms of distance are two areas of the country that have produced a rich uh, lineage of, of of bowling families of bowling tradition down through the years and anyone that says that bowling doesn't belong uh, in the sporting uh, pantheon of of the history of West Cork sport or isn't doesn't belong in the modern day sport take one look on a Saturday evening or a Sunday drive around West Cork and look at the number of young people bowling uh, it's been my experience probably in the last year or so for the first time not probably the last two years some individuals have had to go bowling rather than play soccer or play GAA young kids and they've chosen it because they're on the cusp of an international team they're practicing for a, 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 an inter, or an All Ireland it's hugely hugely popular it has always been popular now it's getting the press room and the coverage that it deserves in the Southern Star and it has a huge following within the Southern Star because of that so I suppose three or four years ago I might have been as ignorant if you want to use the term and turn around and said what's he doing in there Bill Daly Bill Daly's name is synonymous with bowling it's the same way Declan Barron is with GAA you may not agree with his inclusion but to say that bowling doesn't belong in the fraternity of all the other sports the pantheon of sports and the history of West Cork sport I would vehemently disagree with you with anyone on that yeah totally agree with you on that sure. we're going to stick with Bill Daly then and you mentioned the man he beat in the last 16 the legendary Bantry Blues player Declan Barron and he's going for another Bantry scalp in the quarter final as he takes on All Ireland winning captain from 2010 Graham Canty that tie takes place on Friday June 15th you can vote on Kieran McCarthy's Twitter profile he wouldn't allow it the polls to take place on the Southern Star poll Southern Star Twitter page because he wanted all the glory for himself but Bill Daly and Graham Candy is the first of our quarterfinals. And Kieran, can the Bantry Slayer Bill Daly take down Graham Candy? This feels like an ambush, again, lads. I just have to put that out there right away. It feels like I'm being ambushed. At least I'm on a, on a in, in a different county, so I'm I'm somewhat safe. But um, just to point out, the first Twitter poll is this Friday, June fifth. June fifth. So it's this. It's it, it's this Friday. Um. So yeah, like you said, Jack, it's Bill Daly against Graham Kenty, and it's going to be very interesting because I was looking at the stats from the first um, from their last sixteen ties, and they were very very similar in terms of votes, and there there wasn't much to choose between um, the voting totals and Bill Daly's win over Declan Barron and Graham Kenty getting the better of Tim Crowley. But what was noticeable is that Kenty got the better of Crowley by sixty seven percent to thirty three percent. So he got the majority of votes in, in that poll that day. Um, to word the kind of quarterfinalist here, like you said, Jack, Graham Canty, legendary Bentry Blues figure, legendary Cork football figure. He's iconic, you know, he's Captain Fantastic. He's the quintessential leader that you want to, to follow in the battle. And then Bill Daly is just one of bowling's all-time greats and he's He's ranked as one of the best ever bowlers, and probably just behind the legendary Mick Barry. So it's going to be it's a it's a great battle to get us up and running with with the quarterfinals. Um, can Bill Daly take on another Bantry man? I don't know. Um, but what I did notice the last thing was quite interesting was that the the road bowling community took to Twitter to back their man, and I see them. I can see them coming again on Friday in in big numbers again. So. It's just can Bantry Blues and Carberry football, that GA fraternity and GA community, can they, um, I suppose, have enough troops ready to hold off the Bill Daly onslaught? Because it will come. It will come. There will be Bill Daly onslaught on Friday. And um, I, I would just fancy Graham Kenty to get through to this one. Um, I just think he's probably... He's probably more more well known around West Cork, to be quite honest with you, and, and he has that standing in West Cork sport. I'd fancy him to get through, but it's quite ironic that Kenty himself isn't on Twitter. I remember him telling me years ago that he just stays off social media. He's not the biggest fan of it. So there's a, there's a certain irony that Graham Kenty is going well on Twitter polls when the man himself isn't on Twitter. So it's um, if I had to pick one on Friday, Jack, I'd age with Kenty. Uh, sure, we, we know all the superlatives associated with Graham Canty, the footballer. He's an iconic leader. He's worshipped in Bantry. But what of Canty, the actual football player? What do you remember of him from his time in a red jersey? We know what Kieran spoke of there. He was he led he led on the field, he led in the dressing room. But his actual his actual football, what what comes to mind when you think back? 
I, I think like all the great footballers um, done through the years, not just from Cork, they played a the game at their own pace. I think it was his ability. Like Graham, whenever Graham would come out of defence with the ball, there'd be a big roar, we'd get the crowd going. But it didn't often happen that way. It was the same with Bantry, the kind of games, especially at the, towards the end of his career. You know, he didn't have the legs anymore, but what he always had was the brain. And he could read a situation. And irrespective of what line he was, uh, what position he was along the half back line, or more, more often than not centre back, um, he was an anchor. You know, it's 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 kind of a it's it's almost like a cliche used for a defender at this stage that he anchored the defence. But Canty did that because if he needed to do a man to man job or push him back into the full back line, he was able for that. So he was a, he was an all rounder, I suppose, Jack more than anything else. And you know, as time grew on, for somebody, as Kieran said, that it's not on social media, and for somebody so iconic in terms of imagery, he's not that vocal. I mean, he's not somebody that shouts and roars. He never was. And uh, I remember an interview, a brilliant interview that Kieran did with him in the Star a while back. I think it was a three-page feature, and it was it was a fascinating read because it was the first time I had seen him open up about uh, you know subject matters and things that he had never talked about before, kind of in public. And I, I was lucky enough to interview him after a couple of games playing with Patry towards the end of his career. And I think becoming a family man and uh, being from Bantry, certainly that, that that was his focus in life. He'd done all he could do in terms of football. But when you look, when you think back at the great defenders like the, that played for Cork, the Tony Davises, the Tony, the Nations, the, these guys, the Slocums, all these hard defenders that used to come out of defence with the ball. Canty's reading of the game and Canty's ability to just, you know, especially when Cork were under the cosh, not to lose his cool and to be able to just feel his fielding as well was sensational. He played midfield quite a lot for Bantry with, uh, because of that. Um, I don't think I've seen a more all-rounded player from West Cork in a, uh, since then. I really haven't. And in terms of leadership, Canty was fortunate in that that Cork team was a panel of leaders. It wasn't just Graham Canty, to be fair, and he'd be the first to tell you that. You the likes of Nick Murphy, you the likes. I mean, I'll end up naming off the whole team note this stage, but a very, very good defender, a very solid player, uh, dependable, and again, could raise, you know, could raise his game when he needed to, but always played the game at his pace. And his reading of the game, his interceptions, and his tackling um, made him a hugely, hugely important player in, in Cork's GA history. Well, that's the first quarter final. It's on Friday, June fifth, as Kieran correctly said, not. June 15th and it's the greatest moustache in road bowling Bill Daly taking on the three time all star Graham Canty the second quarter final tie takes place on Saturday June 6th and it's West Cork's greatest ever rally driver against West Cork's greatest ever camogie player it's Keith Cronin up against Jennifer O'Leary and I just want to put this one to you Ger, because it's something we touched on just with Bill Daly a few minutes ago the fact that the road bowling community came out strongly behind him could we see something similar again with the rally community i know they're niche sports in ireland so when something like this is happening on social media they tend to and pardon the pun rally the troops as we've, we've, pro- we've probably used every week we've spoken about key cronin on this podcast it's uh, becoming repetitive at this point but we saw it with martin walsh a, a colleague of of ours with the students there he was shouting loud on social media to, to to get all the rally fans around the country to get behind Keith. And I know Jennifer will come on to her in a second. She had a probably the tithed around arguably against Nulla Clear in the last sixteen. But are we likely to see another rally cry from Martin Walsh? I'll do it again. Um yes, I think we will. Uh, I think it's significant that the two quarter final winners that you mentioned there um were also the two largest votes. Uh, involved uh, so far, and I think they're going. The votes are going up as we go along. Um, Cronin, uh, Keith Cronin, is well known in West Cork. To peop- I think for people that would have a passing interest in in rallying, he's the name that crops up. Um, and I saw with my, my own my own son Fionn is very very interested in in motorsport and rallying, and he got to meet him once, and just the awe that he kind of he didn't know much about him, but he knew he was Keith Cronin. That kind of um, ability to, to to generate the interest outside of his his sport means he's he, he could be a formidable opponent for the remainder of this competition but the Nully Cleary Jennifer O'Leary uh, uh, re- opening round was something else in terms of the voting it was going one way and the other and Jennifer does have a huge following in terms of Camogie from where she's from but also the Camogie fraternity we didn't re- we spoke a lot about the football last week we didn't really talk about the Camogie Camogie is huge in West Cork Clown, uh, Barry Row, Newcastle Town Tim League all these areas have always 
been and Kilbritton they've always been big supporters of of Camogie and Jennifer is somebody that they would readily associate with from her time with Cork and also riding with the Southern Star. Um, I just think at this stage because Cronin as you mentioned the motorsport following and fans are very very social media savvy and will watch this don't forget uh, he took down a Premier League player and not just any old Premier League player but West Cork's only Premier League player which I was very surprised at so I would actually fancy him to go through on this one based on that because uh, when it does come about that quarter point will be close but I think Keith Cronin, as I said, his name is just that little bit far wider than Jennifer's um, because the more uh, worldwide appeal of, of motorsport. I think there's a lot of people who know of him um, and have read about him with Martin Walsh's coverage in the Southern Star. Um, and I think as good as and as, as big a following as, as Jennifer has, I'm afraid this may well be the end of the road. Kieran, Keith Cronin is a four-time British rally champion. Jennifer O'Leary, four-time All-Ireland winner. Would you... Go along with what you're saying there, or can you see a way for Jennifer and the Camogie sisterhood and brotherhood to get through this round? I think it's going to be very tight, Jack. Um, like Joe pointed out there, they're the two highest votes in, in the last 16. And it was interesting, for this week's Southern Star, I spoke to Jamie Wall just to get his thoughts on Best in the West in the competition. And he actually kind of talked about Keith Cronin. He said he didn't know too much about Keith but a quick Google and a quick look at the star a couple of weeks ago, he said he learned so much about Keith Cronin winning four British Rally Championships, winning the Irish Tyramac series um, years ago. And he goes, we kind of realised in, Jesus, there's a big motorsport community in West Cork and Keith Cronin is really, really good. And and James, one of those who admitted that motorsport wouldn't be one of his kind of top sporting loves, but he recognises the talent that Keith Cronin is. And that's almost the beauty of this competition too, that we're, we're celebrating the best local sports stars and we're making everybody aware of what Keith Cronin did. And we're making people aware of what Jennifer O'Leary achieved. Like a Camogie All-Stars and four All-Ireland wins is absolutely phenomenal. She's an all-time great. And to answer your question, I can see a way that Jennifer can win this because what Jennifer has, she's the home vote in Barry Row in West Cork, but she's living up in Armagh and she's her club Middletown up there. And in fairness to them, they got behind her against Nolly Cleary and they've been pushing her from, from, from that side of the country. So there is a, a big kind of following for Jennifer O'Leary as well. But what she will lead in her quarterfinal is she'll need, it's like to, to rally the troops, to use that pun again, she'll need her former teammates to come on board, you know, kind of her, her former Cork teammates, her former teammates down here, her teammates up up in up in um, Middleton, Middletown, to, to push her because she has what it takes. She'd be a very worthy semi-finalist as would Keith Cronin. I can see this would be very interesting. Um, to be honest, I think for it put Martin Walsh in a bit of a predicament because he's <laughs> he's um, he's the motorsport correspondent and he's been back in Keith Cronin very vocally on motorsport, but he's in the same neck of the woods as Jennifer O'Leary is kind of out in Barry Row and Tim League and so on, and he'd know Jennifer and, and, and the family and stuff. So... I'd be very interested to see how, how vocal Martin's going to be here because he looks across the road, he can see the O'Leary's and then on the other side he's pushing motorsport so he's after putting himself into a bit of a corner but no better man to, to get out of it. Um, I think it's going to be quite tight again and just because jor has gone for Keith, I'm going to back Jennifer on this one. Um, I think Jennifer could come out of this one and um, yeah, she could go through to a semi-final potentially against Graham Canty and you're talking, Jesus, two sporting GA greats of West Cork there but um, I'm running before I can I can walk so but before I I give Jennifer the nod for, for this quarter final Jack Just on um, motorsport for a second lads obviously you mentioned that there is a strong motorsport community in West Cork the Southern Star gives plenty of coverage to motorsport in general but is it an underappreciated sport in Ireland as a whole because it's not often you see much coverage dedicated to a sport which is popular in Ireland and is like a worldwide sport when you think about sports that I had motorsport in general like Formula 1 one of the biggest sports in the world or PlayStation games dedicated to it but in Ireland it's almost even though everyone knows someone who is heavily involved in motorsport it seems to be overlooked in some ways and I would be as guilty as anyone of that I don't really pay any attention to it now the same way Jamie Wall said when he read up about Keith Cronin, he could see that this man has achieved things on a national scale that outweigh lots of other sports people. But the coverage he gets, again, is minor 
on a national scale. Do you think there's anything in that, Joe, that motorsports are kind of an underappreciated sport in Ireland? Um, it's still a hugely popular sport in West Cork and, and throughout the country. It's I think you look at the rallies and the number of people that travel to them now and the number of kids is something I've noticed as well. Again, I have a son who's very interested in it, so I see a bit when the West Cork Rally comes around, we pay a lot more attention to it and we, cover, we follow it as much as we possibly can. What has happened to motorsport in the country, as Martin Walsh has mentioned in a, in a lot of his dispatches of late, is the cost and the insurance. It has driven away, pardon the pun, uh, a lot it's of... It's impossible not to have um, puns talking about motorsport. <laughs> a lot of the... Uh, uh, there was a time in West Cork where, back in the early, early days, when it started out, the rallying, that you could just, you know, you could have a very old car and enter it in a rally, get on your crash helmet and your, your gear, and you get away with it. You just can't do that anymore. And it's it's becoming prohibitive to um, any amateur or would be up and coming driver, so that that's a serious, uh, a serious issue that it, that is not going to go away in terms of rallying. In terms of support, Jack, uh, you take one look at the West Cork Rally and the number of people that follow it morning, noon, and night, and um, the the scrutineering when they open the engines and you're just looking at the car. There are hundreds of people always gathering around to watch that. Formula One is obviously uh, again very very. Im- you know, it, it's worldwide. It's it's social media. It's on your it's on your satellite TVs. But I was in um, Watergrass Hill not so long ago with my son at the go karting track there, and it just caught. So it happened on the same day that they opened the track at certain dates, where it's not being used the main track, to allow anyone to come in with their own hybrid car, and uh, you pay your money, you sign your name away, and uh, off you go. Must have been 50, 60 cars all day long. As soon as one hour was over, there was another bunch of cars coming up. So motorsport huge and remains huge but the participation and the ability to pay to become a professional driver and be part of a rallying you know like that unless you've got a couple of sponsors behind you and not just one but two or three major sponsors behind you um, it is prohibiting the next generation of drivers from coming through and I think Mark Walsh definitely would concur with that well that's quarter final number two between Keith Cronin and Jennifer O'Leary so tune in to Kieran McCarthy's Twitter page on Saturday morning to see who takes the checkered flag there. Coming up in oh. part two, <laughs> we're going to preview quarter final number three. I couldn't help myself. The best in the West in association with Access Credit Union. Access Credit Union is your trusted local financial partner. Access your money 24 7 from anywhere in the world with an Access Credit Union current account and enjoy all the benefits while keeping your money local. We support local communities. We support you. Welcome back to the Star Sport Podcast. We're previewing the best in the West quarterfinals. It's our search for West Cork's greatest ever sports person. And next up is quarterfinal number three on Sunday, June 7th. It's Ireland's greatest ever rower up against Castlehaven legend Niall Cahalan. Kieran, I'm going to come to you first. On the podcast earlier this week, you said that of the eight who qualified for the quarterfinals, the one who must do better was Paul O'Donovan. Now, you weren't criticising his performance. He had nothing to do with it. It was a mythical online Twitter vote. But we all picked him as our winner at the beginning, and he didn't generate as much interest or votes as we would have expected. 100% check. Um, like we said, these, this, um, this competition is on Twitter polls, so... Kind of what you're relying on is is the backing of your of your community and I suppose people on Twitter to to vote for you. And even though Paul had a convincing win against John Coffey, it was sixty eight percent to thirty two. Um, what I noticed is that the total votes wasn't huge, and I think that's very interesting going into this quarter final against Niall Cahillan because Niall is obviously Cassid Haven stock, and they're noted for for getting behind their men and women. So I'm expecting. Castlehaven to come out in force and um, behind Niall Cahillan this this Sunday. So for Paul O'Donovan to to have a chance in this one, to be quite honest, he need the his own community first, but even the wider community who think he's the best in the West and if they feel he's the best in the West, to vote for him. So it's going to be quite intriguing because um, it is possibly the, the tie of the round because what you're talking about here, Jack, is. Ireland's greatest ever roar, kind of. He's a four-time world champion. He's an Olympic silver medalist, and he's only 20, 25, 26 years of age. And there's a lot more to come from Paul O'Donovan. And he's up against the legendary Niall Cahillan of of Tour Ireland's with Cork, three county titles with Castlehaven, and just a, an all-round legend. And 
what else can you post a roar from Skibreen Rowan Club up against uh, a Castlehaven footballer? And I'm going to stoke the fires here because I want to see people come out and vote on, on Sunday. This is Skibreen against Castlehaven. This is a derby because Paula Donovan is Skibreen Rowan Club and Niall Cahillan is Castlehaven. So this is as close to a Skibreen Haven derby, derby as we're going to get this year. So I'm urging people from both communities to back their men on Sunday because um, it's going to be, it could possibly be an absolute cracker here because you've two outstanding candidates and I'm looking forward to this. Um, Jamie Wall in this week's star called it the game of death. You know, he was like, kind of potentially he said this one, it could be an, an epic because you're two standout figures, two legendary kind of local figures kind of up against each other. And um I wrote the book in the own club, so I'm going to back the roar here. I have to back the roar. I have to back Paul O'Donovan. I think he has the, he's the pedigree, he's the medals, he's the, he's a standout sports star to to win this one. But he will need people to come in behind him. So if you think it's Paul, if you think Paul O'Donovan is the best in the West, get on Twitter on Sunday and vote for Paul on my Twitter page. And just to remind listeners too, the polls open at 10 a.m. in the morning. They run through to 2 a.m. the following morning. So that's 16 hours. So there's no excuses. If you're on Twitter, you'll find 60 seconds of the day on either Friday, Saturday, Sunday or Monday to go on. And you're literally pressing vote. It's the touch of a button. And if you're in a good mood, it's two touches. Vote and retweet. That's all you have to do. We're not asking for much. So whoever you want to vote for, just get on Twitter and vote. But um, I'm going to upset the Castle Hayden fraternity here because I'm giving my support to Paul O'Donovan on Sunday. Like I said, I did write a book. It's called Something in the Water. It's still in bookshops. It's still available. You can still get it online. So um, that's my that's my plug there, Jack. Um, <laughs> I love it. Joe, um, we know all about Paul O'Donovan's credentials. As Kieran said, arguably Ireland's greatest ever rower. I heard some people say before that he's arguably Ireland's greatest ever sportsman because of everything he's won. But how much stock do you place in his status as a cultural icon? What he became after the silver medal? He's appeared on Graham Norton. He coined the iconic phrase, close your eyes and pull like a dog. Very few Irish athletes have ever achieved the sort of celebrity status in quotation marks that the O'Donovan brothers have had. That's down to their personality, their character. It's infectious. For a competition like this, is it something that you take into account? I know sporting achievement is the most important, but in reality, the most famous athletes over our lifetimes, what made them special was often their personality and things they did outside of their own sport. So where, where do you stand on that? Um, in terms of a league table of where he sits, where Paul sits uh, in Irish Olympians, he's, he's right up at the top. It's subjective again, but uh, like from reading Kieran's book, where he and Gary came from to do what they did, and where Skibbereen Roy Club came from to do what they continually seem to do, is you know is up there with some of the most amazing stories you could you could even imagine from such a small rural pocket of an island to produce the number of quality roars they have is is amazing and there's something in the water is, is an apt title because of it with Paul and with Gary at the time of the Olympics I think their off the cuff remarks and their happy go lucky nature just the way they are certainly attracted an awful lot of attention that would not might not necessarily have happened if they were just you know very dour and very quiet and very singular uh, kind of roars and um uh, I think their personality shone through for a long time. But what, I, what I've what i said this before on the podcast, what I love most about the two of them, and especially Paul, is the fact that they were so pissed off after the Olympics because they'd only won silver. That's the proper sign of you know of two athletes who, are, who take what they do very, very seriously. What hasn't helped Paul, I think, in the last six months, possibly more, um, is that we haven't really heard from him. Uh, he's not in the media. They're very, very busy. I know they've got a, a lot of what they have to do, which I didn't realise until I read the book, Kieran's book. Uh, I didn't even know Kieran had written written a book until just now, amazingly. <laughs> um, is is the amount of time you have to take yourself away from not just the public spotlight, but from where you are. You have to just go and isolate yourself. And the phenomenal amount of training that they do, and the pain that they put themselves through. I mean, it's done in, in pretty much in isolation. That takes a huge amount of dedication. And I have huge respect for Paul and for Gary and for all those roars because because of that. I didn't realise how hard they push their bodies 
you know, there's a certain amount of ignorance when it comes to rowing. You think it's just your upper body and that's it. You just pull like a dog, as you said, but there's so much more to it. So Paul is, I think, around the world recognised as one of the best rowers in the world by the rowing fraternity and by the Olympic fraternity, certainly in Ireland. But for a competition like this, which is a locally based one, I think Kieran is right to say that it is, if it's coming down to Skib v the Haven, Paul needs to attract a few Skibreen votes because I actually think Niall Callan is going to win this one. And I think he's going to win it because um, what Cahalan has is this kind of tribal, local, cultural, just iconic status. It's not worldwide. It's it's obviously everybody would have seen him playing for Cork. But if you're like me and, and you grew up watching him play for the Haven, I mean, he was just this, more so than Tompkins, I suppose, for the Haven, to be honest with you. And for the likes of John Cleary and all those great players that I can't think of now off the top of my head, he was the embodiment of what Castle Haven is. Uh, you know, never say no spirit, put your body on the line for the jersey, whatever cliche you want to add. He was that. And I think you look at his sons now coming up through the ranks of the hurling in football, they're very much like that out of the same ilk. I think he's going to win it. Whether he should win it or not, now Callan is up for debate and subjective, but I think he actually is going to win it because I think he'll generate more local votes unless, as Kieran has pointed out, the Skibbereen area get behind him and I have been final point I've been to enough Skibreen Castlehaven Derbies uh, that I'm glad it's virtual uh, you know it's always an occasion they really they, there's a lot of respect there but um, you know they want to beat each other really badly if it was Tiddlywinks they'd want to beat each other that's just the way the rivalry is it's going to be very interesting but I think Niall Callan will win well there you go folks you heard it here first Niall Callan to win from Joe McCarthy and Paul O'Donovan to win from Kieran McCarthy so that's one to look forward to on Sunday. The final quarter final is on Monday, June 8th, and it's Irish hockey legend David Hart up against Ireland's fastest woman, Phil Healy. And now I call her Ireland's fastest woman despite the fact she has said she's sick of being <laughs> labelled as that because <laughs> she's so much more. But that's a fact. So I'm gonna go I'm gonna keep going with that until she actually tells me personally to stop calling her that. But let's get into this one. David Hart, I thought was one of the big shocks of the opening round because Kevin Joe O'Sullivan as you mentioned at the top of the show Joe a Bear a legend I expected the Bear a community to get behind him some of them did some of them didn't but Kevin um, David Hart I was going to say Kevin Hart like the comedian Kevin Hart I did just say David Hart had the hockey community behind him and as you said the Hart family are well known it's another interesting one in that hockey isn't that widely played in Ireland especially in rural areas but He's captain Ireland at the Olympics. He's a two-time hockey goalkeeper of the year in a sport that's played by around 3 million people worldwide, according to the Google I carried out before we started recording. So, Kieran, what do you think David's credentials are for actually winning this whole thing out? Um, when you're looking, I suppose, when people are deciding their criteria of why they're voting for a, a certain per, a person, are they going to vote for someone because, like an Ike Helen, because you're a footballer and kind of you know Gaelic football or is your criteria that you're going to vote for kind of the accomplishments of the sports people and if we're talking about accomplishments you're looking at David Hart and he's a two-time world hockey goalkeeper of the year so for two years in a row this man from Battle Spittle was voted the best hockey goalkeeper in the world and that's two years in a row and he was actually in the running for the, uh, the for the award for a third year in a row but he, he didn't he didn't win it so you're talking about a man who's 225 caps for the Irish men's hockey team, who captained the Irish men's hockey team to the Olympics in Rio in 2016. And that was the first time in 108 years that Ireland had a men's hockey team at the Olympics. And you're talking about a man who plays hockey professionally with SV Campong over in the Netherlands and who's making his living off the sport. And like I said, he's I rate him as the best hockey goalkeeper in the world. So he's, he's a West Cork man who's performing right at the top of a global sport so his credentials are very very strong kind of maybe people in, in West Cork and even Ireland in general mightn't take much notice of hockey except for when it's in the news every couple of years whether the women's team are, are getting to a European final or the men's team qualify for the Olympics or the women's team have qualified for the, the Olympics maybe it's like when Wimbledon comes along we're all out the back kind of hitting a, a tennis ball off the wall well we were as kids I don't do that anymore kind of um but you know, kind of when when sports are getting the national um, at, the national attention, then we take a look at them. 
But I, sometimes you probably look past the achievements of David Hart and his brother, Connor Hart, who was an Irish international as well, his twin brother, Dave. What they've done for hockey in Ireland and hockey in West Cork is phenomenal. So he has huge credentials. Uh, he's up against it here with Phil Healy, to be honest, because what I think what Phil has is she's a very current sports star and she's very visible in the community and she could be racing there up in the up in CIT at the, the Cork City Sports and set national records up there. So she's probably more visible to people down here. But David Hart has, has a chance in this one, Jack, because I was watching the, the voting um, on Twitter and he's winning against Kevin Jor and Kinsale Hockey Club and different hockey clubs are coming in behind him. Vote for David, vote for David. And if the local hockey clubs get behind him and if he's... I suppose fans over the Netherlands get behind him. He could he could take out Phil Healy here. Um, you mentioned you rate David Hart as the best hockey goalkeeper in the world. I was just wondering who else would you have in the top five there, Kieran? Um, we might <laughs> we might leave that one there. No, um, Jor, I'm going to come to you to chat about Phil Healy now because I thought Kieran asked her coach Shane McCormick an interesting question on last week's podcast, and it was that in ten years' time. Could Phil Healy be almost an outright favourite for this? And obviously it's impossible to say. But just based on what you've seen from Phil so far in her career, could you see her going on to maybe attain the status of, to use another Cork example, Sonia O'Sullivan? I know it was a different uh, discipline they were in, but it's still athletics. So there is that scope in Irish athletics to become a superstar. Based on what you've seen from Phil, could you see her going on to achieve that status? Um initially when i first met her a couple of years ago and got to just interview her and, and karen will probably attest to this um i couldn't get over how softly spoken she was and just how reserved obviously she was still quite young and this, this was, there was a lot of things happened very quickly in, in her career and her life um with athletics and i think when when people and the likes of shane mccormick would see the potential initially that was there people got very excited and i mean there's footage of her coming back from the dead to win a race that, that you know that fantastic race um, and I think just her her demeanour early on when I first interviewed her, and I've interviewed a lot of local athletes down through the years, but one that I always remember was Olive Lachnan. And I remember asking Olive at the time, an Olympian, I said, at what, she just was the nicest person you could meet, very, very charming, very talkative. I said, at what point do you stop being this person and become this absolute thunderbolt on the on the track? And she was taken aback and she didn't she couldn't didn't understand what I was asking. But Phil Healy, if you watch her now, if she if she conducts an interview or if you see her speaking on social media, there is this steely determination, there is this quiet confidence, and there is this gaze, Jack. And the the only thing I can liken it to is Roy Keane. It's that look that says, I would hate to be racing against Phil Healy if that's the way she's looking down the track at me or across from me. She now has a body of work where she has the potential to go on and be something special. Injury-free, of course, and who knows what's going to happen in the coming years. But what Phil Healy has, as Kieran correctly attested to there, is that she has a local and a global reach now as well. And somebody of her age and her profile in the kind of, unfortunately, COVID-19 has been a big setback for her, but for all athletes, not just herself, I think this could have been a huge year for her, the way things were going. Um, what I can't get over, though, is is when that switch goes off with these with these athletes and when you meet them, it's just, you know, they're all very talkative, very nice, very formal, but then you see them on the track and it's just that look that she has. And I mean, I'm not making a big deal out of it, but it's just, I've seen her change, I suppose, over the last couple of years from being that really nice, kind of quiet, reserved person. Now she has confidence. Now she's develop her body is developing. She's toned up. I mean, she's much, much faster than what she was two years ago. And she's amongst... You know, she's in quite a competitive, um, quite a competitive, in, you know, a sport that she's in. She's going to have to remain at the top. And we heard about how she took herself away to train properly with Shane McCormack. I mean, if you've got that determination this early in your career, you've given yourself every chance to be successful, both at Irish and at international level. Where she'd be in 10 years, I've no idea. But if it's down to determination and it's down to hard work and it's down to pure talent, uh, she has every chance to surpass Sonia O'Sullivan, but she would be the first to tell you that she doesn't want to talk about that. She just want to, you know, she's focused on what's coming up right now and what, what's next. I think in this quarter final, as much as surprised as I was to see David Hart beat uh, Kevin Jarrell O'Sullivan, 
uh, the volume that Phil Healy took from her percentage, I think it was about 60, 60-odd percent um, in, in overcoming Noel Faley, tells me that there's a huge amount of people behind her. If we're talking about the Kieran McCarthy uh, Southern Star, you know, this particular Kieran McCarthy competition on Twitter, I think she's going. To, I think she's actually going to beat uh, David Hart. And I think at this stage, if she maintains that volume and that percentage, there's no reason that she can't go on and win it. There was a race last year or the year before where Phil Healy pulled away from her opponents and she just kept going. I compared it at the time to Frankel's win in the 2000 Guineas. So there's every chance that if she does beat David Hart, she could go on to do that to the field in Best in the West. Kieran, I'm going to get both your predictions for each of the quarterfinal ties again and then we're going to pick a winner. But could you see Phil Healy going on to win this at this point? I could, yeah. Um, interestingly, I was talking to one of the the defeated last 16 sports stars last week and um, this person said that they'd love to see Phil Healy win it outright, that they see Phil as the outstanding athlete in, in West Cork. Um, they said on and off the track that Phil Healy is something else and they actually kind of single out Phil as their one to watch. So and I found that quite interesting because you're looking at the calibre of all the sports people involved and all of a sudden I was told, oh, Phil Healy, this 25-year-old um, athlete from Valenine, is the pick of the bunch, which was quite interesting coming from another one of the shortlisted sports people. Um, Phil could, Phil has, has the potential. And when you're looking at some of the sports people, look at the Canties and the Jennifer O'Leary's and the Cahillans, what we're talking about is what they have achieved. We're looking back in their careers and their magnificent careers. And Phil Healy is in the middle of her career and it's already magnificent. So we don't know what the future will hold. But if she stopped right now, she's a multiple Irish record holder. She's the fastest woman. She's holds so many personal bests and Irish bests and so on. Like she's already had a phenomenal career and you still get the feeling that she's going to go faster. She's going to break her own Irish record. She's going to touch wood, go to the Olympics next year. She's she's the world indoors next year. She's the European indoors next year. So there's a lot more to come from Fihili in terms of, we've seen her progress in the last couple of years. Since 2014, she's won, I think, 10 gold medals between the indoor and outdoor, outdoor Irish national championships, which is phenomenal. And there's more to come. So to answer your question, Jack, yeah, I can see Phil going a long way in this competition. And I just find it interesting that we're talking about a young West Cork woman who's in the middle of her career and she's putting it up to some of the, the best West Cork sports people we've ever seen. And we're seeing people come in behind and vote for a Phil. So she could go a, a long way because we can't dismiss the athletics community as well. It's quite big. Even West Cork and across Ireland, like, there's a big athletics community there. There's a lot of people involved in athletics. So if they come in behind Phil... Um, she could she could race past the finishing line OK well let's get predictions for the quarterfinals I'm not even going to acknowledge that pun it wasn't quite as good as the racing ones we had <laughs> earlier in the show oh, but quarterfinal number one Friday June 5th Bill Daly versus Graeme Canty Joe one word or two words Canty Canty Kieran. Canty quarterfinal number two Saturday June 6th Keith Cronin versus Jennifer O'Leary Kieran, will come to you here this first Jennifer O'Leary. Sure. No, oh, Keith Cronin. Keith Cronin for me. Sunday, June seventh, third quarter final. It's Paula Donovan up against Niall Cahillan. You've both already given predictions for this one, but just to clarify, Jur. Uh, I'm gonna go with Niall Cahillan. And Kieran. Paula Donovan to make a splash in the Skip Haven Derby. That would maybe if he was a swimmer, we could use splash or a Olympic diver, but um, no, I'm not giving you that one. Tie number four, Monday, June 4th. We've just spoken about it. It's David Hart versus Phil Healy. Kieran? Phil to race the victory. <laughs> and sure. Phil Healy to win. <laughs> and lastly, before we wrap up, who is going to win it out? Sure. That's a tough one, but I. I... No, I'd say th- from what I've seen of the voting so far, Phil Healy, I think she'll get her a bit of momentum. I think she could do it. Gold medal for Phil. <laughs> and Kieran, I think potentially we could be looking at a Jennifer O'Leary and Phil Healy final. To be quite honest with you, which would be quite interesting uh, if my predictions come off. Um, if I had to pick someone right now, I'd give the nod to Jennifer O'Leary. Okay, well we're going to leave it there. 
for this week. Thanks for listening to the Star Sport Podcast. We'll be back at the same time next week. If you enjoy these shows, please make sure to rate, review and subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, Google Podcasts, Acast, Stitcher or wherever else you listen to the show.